All right, hello everyone. I wanted to talk about nakshatras. So this will be an introduction to nakshatras, the 27 nakshatras, and just some helpful kind of background information on them. Now, one of the first and coolest things about the nakshatras is that they are really, really old. And this is the part of Vedic astrology that is truly Vedic. Um, when you go back into the Rig Veda, which is like the oldest recorded, probably the oldest composed thing um, in history, modern historians like to say that the that the Vedas most likely were composed around 2000 to 2000, 2500 BC, making them around 4,000 years old. But they do that using like linguistic dating which is not very accurate and if you actually use astronomical dating then that becomes much more accurate to pin down the general ages and time periods and then within that it makes more sense to go and use linguistic dating but you know how it is with a lot of this history stuff a lot of what we knew about history is being rewritten let's just put it that way to be blunt and india is of course no different so when you actually look at it astronomically the Vedas appear to have been composed at the time that Mrigashira, this star, was on the spring equinox. So Mrigashira would have fallen in Pisces, or sorry, at the beginning of Aries. Now that star falls all the way almost like it's in the middle of Gemini, um, almost towards Cancer. So it's almost like an entire season that that has shifted in the zodiac. That's due to the phenomenon of the precession of the equinoxes, is what they call it. What it means is that basically um, every year with spring, when spring happens, um, due to this certain wobble between the earth and the sun, the, sh the stars behind, the stars in the background shift, they precess. And so you actually, it's really fascinating because you see evidence of this in all these cultures around the world where they honor different stars or different things and related them to the spring as these ages changed. And so in ancient times, there are references in the Vedas to the spring equinox being in Rigashira. That could only have happened in 4000 to 4500 BC. Way longer from 2000 to 2500 BC. So it's most likely that the Vedic, that the Vedas, were, the Rig Veda was composed as far back as 6,500 years ago and that's just when it would have been composed and then it could have you know obviously a lot of these things could have gone back further than that most likely did um, so the the nakshatras are all throughout the Rig Veda and basically the the nakshatras what you really want to know about how they work to understand them is to just understand the devas or the deities that rule each nakshatra so uh, understanding the, the Rig Veda and things like that's very good. Getting into all the mythology and all that stuff is a really good way to understand the nakshatras. Because if you understand the, like the philosophies and the mythologies behind these different deities, these different gods and goddesses, you kind of understand their symbolism, what they represent, then these nakshatras just become clear and they just become, uh, you know, they become very clear to you. So that's one great thing to do if you're wanting to learn more about the nakshatras. You got to go and like read the Puranas and the, the all that stuff. See, there's other parts of astro Vedic astrology that are maybe easier to understand without learning a, a lot about the the ancient you know Vedic culture. But this is sort of you know the nakshatras are so intertwined with that ancient culture that you really would want to do well to learn about that you know if you want to use them and makes sense right I mean uh, what's interesting is that I've said this before in videos but like the Parashara and Jaimini and other other books as well they give you just all this information about the hor the Rashis and the planets houses but they don't talk about nakshatras that much except for just little bits here and there and in Parashara he says you know go to he says basically like, go to the expert sources on nakshatras to learn about those i'm here to talk about or i'm going to teach you about you know 
like Rashi's and signs and all this other stuff. And so um, Jaimini also makes an allusion to that where he says, uh, Hura Udaya Siddha, Siddha, I forget the sutra, whatever, but he says a sutra about that as well, um, implying that you need to get your, like to be perfect in this, you need to know the nakshatras as well as it seems to imply the nakshatra dasha, vimshatari dasha, is how uh, a lot of the Jaimini techniques work really well being timed through that. Okay, so my point with that is that basically it seems that if you were a Brahmin, you know, Briha Parashra Hora Shastra is like the source text that we, we use. It's kind of like this Bible of Vedic astrology, and that would have been read by a Brahmin in ancient times. Um, and a Brahmin would have already grown up knowing all these stories of the nakshatras and all the myths of Varuna and Indra and Prajapati and Rudra and all this stuff. So it makes a lot of sense that um, Parashara said, you know, go to those sources for that information. Or it's almost implying like, well, you know, you grew up as a Hindu, so you already know about nakshatras <laughs> is another way of putting that, right? Or like, go to that stuff. I'm here to teach you the more esoteric aspect, which is the grahas, the bhavas, the planets, and all this stuff. And that's worth saying too, like the more, the most accurate techniques are really, in my opinion, with the grahas and the rashis and bhavas. Absolutely no denying it. Um, and that might be because some of these things with nakshatras are just so old that they're almost needing to be updated by a master or a rishi or someone who needs to step in and kind of help us update them for this age or maybe there's a million other reasons maybe we just don't understand it um, but in general the you'll see when I do readings if you've gotten a reading from me I emphasize a lot more of these planets and avashtas and these things Jaimini techniques Nowhere in Jaimini does he say, oh, a planet in Kritika Nakshatra will do this. But then he says things like the sun in Zirabhmakaraka will make you a chief in affairs of the state. You know, um, so I've all, that's another, that's just an important thing to understand when you're getting into astrology. It took me a long time before I learned that. I wish I had learned that earlier on, that there sort of is like the, 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 the moon rules the nakshatras and the moon is the subjective consciousness. And so nakshatra techniques and those things deal a lot more with the internal state, your subjective states, feelings, and you know, of course the moon is like the planet of growth and how your consciousness is growing and sort of these background energies that color our mind. When it comes to the more objective side of life, it's definitely going to be seen from the Rashis and more concrete like solar techniques. And what I mean by solar techniques is the sun creates the 12 signs of the zodiac. So the Rashis, the sun is objective. It's just, you know, when the sun rises, it's day now. Um, it's just very straightforward like that. So in the same way, the techniques based on the, the sun's zodiac of 12 signs are a lot more clear and objective and straightforward. So if you want to be able to predict someone's career, you don't, it's, it's, it's going to be seen a lot more clearly from the Jaimini techniques, from the, the signs and the placements of the Atmakarika and different signs and things like that. It's not that the nakshatras won't show it, but they're going to show this more background energy, which just will harder, be harder to see. For example, you could be a, um, you know, you could be an artist that has Barani nakshatra, or you could be an artist with, um, you know, like Pushya nakshatra, and those would be just totally different art themes that you would be working with, right? Because if you were working with Barani, there would be more of these themes of death, some cruel, violent themes behind it, um, or sexual themes, or bearing, responsibility, or burdens that, you know, art that's kind of about woes and difficulties or darker things. Whereas if it was in Pushya, it'd be all about art symbolizing like abundance and fruition and like attainment of things, you know, and the good side of life, we might say. Um, but whether you're going to be an artist or not is going to be seen through the Rashis of Jaimini Sutras and, and you know what I mean? Seen through the planets, conjunctions, um, things like that. Um, 
more of the uh, techniques that you've learned um, that you might learn in the Jaimini Sutras or from Brihat Prashra. So that's a really important just concept to understand. There's like different uh, techniques we have to use for different systems and w what we're trying to find out. And there's more of a subjective lunar system which the nakshatras go well with and Briha Parashra Hora Shastra is more connected to that. It's the one that gives Vimshatari Dasha and it has a lot more nakshatra information. The Jaimini system is very objective and solar and has nothing about nakshatras in it really um, and just has Rashis. Um, so those kind of are really useful and it's important to know that distinction. The growth of Dharma on the planet is said to relate to the nakshatras that the vernal equinox falls under. And so like I said, in ancient times it fell under Orion and Mrigashira, and then over time it shifted and it was in, um, I believe, and then later in around 2000 BC it was around in Kritika and the Pleiades. And you see at that time was when the entire culture, the Brahmana period, that's what they call it, was when the, the Vedas and the fire rituals and the sacrifices were all so crucial to the culture. And that was a main aspect of spirituality and how you were getting to God back then. That's because Kritika was on the equinox. It was Agni. The fire and fire worship was the theme of that age. And so that's why that, I think that's why that was very, very prominent. And I'm not the first person to say this. Um, and so then, like, you know, uh, as time moves on, another star, Ashwini, will be on the equinox. And then another, oh, then the horse travel and the horse chariots and war and things like that will become more prominent, reaching things swiftly in locomotion. Right now we have Uttara Bhajrapada on the, on the equinox, which is uh, the serpent of the depths and waters. I think that that has a lot to do with like a, a little bit of the spiritual awakening and, and everything that's been happening in this uh, current time. And so as we watch, you know, as we watch in a long, like the, these nakshatras are one aspect of astrology that we can use to examine big cycles of time. So it's like a much bigger clock than the clock of the zodiac, if that makes sense. Yeah, so the equinox has been happening in Uttara Bhadrapada since 1100 AD-ish. Where, what I'm trying to get at is basically like where uh, Varuna, the moon, was said to go, he was said to tap, like, tap into that energy or grow that consciousness or grow that thing. And so the nakshatras are all going to show where different things are going to grow and how they're going to grow. So as I'll show in examples, like... The, there are nakshatras that are up facing and are good for building a tower and then there are nakshatras that are down facing that are not good for that like 9-11 happened with Maga nakshatra in a down facing nakshatra and the twin towers fell you see um, the Titanic was launched on a side face with sorry with lots of planets and side facing nakshatras but afflicted and ashamed and all these problems so it didn't go side 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 to side well and it got destroyed um, so these like unique qualities of how things grow will show you how an event's going to grow so that's why it's so awesome for Maherta so it's all starting to make sense for you guys hopefully so like I've, I have an uh, plant a bunch of fruit trees over the years. I always take mohertas of when I transplant them and when I grow them and note that. I've got all kinds of cool mohertas examples for you guys. Uh, the best days I've ever gone surfing, you know, or the, the worst time I did this or a lot of historical events as well. And it's, I think it's going to be really fun. So that's what my nakshatra course is going to be focusing on a lot is moherta, but also just a uh, practical application of them in general. Um, so that's the other thing. Aside from the myths, you want to learn about these unique qualities of each of them. And it's a lot of stuff to memorize at first, but I'll, I think I'll be able to help you guys understand it all. So like one of the main things I've talked about before is the Datu Mula Jiva. So if you want a thing to grow a good plant, you know, if you're trying to plant something, you might want to plant it on a Mula Nakshatra, which relates to roots. Mula, is, mula means roots in plants. Um, and then, or like in a previous example, I talked about how the, the peaches had datu or stone or mineral nakshatra involved because they're a stone fruit. Um, 
perhaps if it was another type of fruit like citrus it wouldn't have had that you know what I mean um, because it didn't have a stone so anyways it's it's really unique to, to kind of find these different qualities going on um, there's you know uh, destructive creative and preservative nakshatras that's another really simple way to see it like the Brahma Vishnu and Shiva one um, you want to if you want to like pull a bunch of weeds in your garden you want to do that on a nasa or a shiva nakshatra you know what i mean where it's going to uh be better for destruction and dissolution um you know and then there's like soft and friendly nakshatras each one has a quality like fixed and firm or soft and friendly and sharp or you know cruel and violent so those are all really really great when it comes to nakshatras um when you get married, you know, you'd want to be on like a soft and friendly one, etc., etc. So, uh, yeah, I think that one of the important things to know about, um, or to be the best with as an astrologer, a Vedic astrologer, you do have to know nakshatras. And to know nakshatras, you have to know a little bit about some of the background um, history and everything of the um, ancient yogic culture. And so... Another really interesting point that I, like I was talking about earlier is that the confusion about which uh, nakshatra comes first. Ashwini uh, is listed first nowadays, but Kritika is listed in really old books, um, and that is because Kritika was on the equinox back in like 2000 BC. And then if we had access to books from 4000, they probably would have listed Mrigashira as the first one. Um, I think. Personally, the first nakshatra, if there was any one, I would pick it to be Mula, because Mula means root or origin, um, and that's like also where we found the black hole. At the center of our galaxy, there is a black hole, and that happens to be at the part that of the, the sky that the ancient Hindus called Mula, the origin, the root, and they say, you know what I mean, the root, um, that everything revolves around is the black hole um, the, and the uh, Vishnu Nabi or the navel of Vishnu. So black holes were were something that was well known to the ancient Rishis and they called them the, you know, they they, they called it what it was. They called it like they saw it, huh? <laughs> um, again, I'll get into more of those details in the course, but it's really, it's interesting how the nakshatra um, all this stuff relates a lot more to basically mundane astrology and also muhurta and how events unfold. And that's kind of the point that I'm trying to get at is that um, when we think about everything with keeping in all this background information into consideration, the, for example, the Mahurta Chintamani is a text that goes deep into nakshatras, and it's a Mahurta text about doing things at the right moment. Um, and so, when it comes to nakshatras, I found the best use of them is in Mahurta. And so I'm going to be focusing on that in the course that I teach, as well as natal chart and a lot of other stuff. But I'm going to spend a lot of time focusing on Mahurta and nakshatra and how they work. Um, because that is what they were used for historically quite a lot and they still seem to be working really well.